So in this short video, I will talk about uh, immunization. Uh, today I have received a question from our former uh, PFS student uh, regarding uh, one line from fixed income topic of CFA level 3. And uh, I, I think this explanation will be also helpful for CFA level 1 and level 3 and level 2 students. Uh, so the question is regarding the target rate of return and the uh, total portfolio uh, return. So uh, whenever we measure a portfolio's return, we tend to measure that uh, in terms of yield to maturity and uh, whenever you want to immunize your portfolio so the target rate of return has to be set uh, so that uh, whenever there is a change in interest rate the reinvestment income and the uh, price change due to interest rate uh, exactly offset one another so that uh, you can lock it with a rate of return in investing in fixed income portfolio so if you want to immunize you have to set a target rate of return so let's uh, first start at the line uh, the line tells uh, for an upward sloping income. So remember, uh, the assumption is the yield curve is upward sloping, and also there's another assumption that uh, yield curve or the slope of the yield curve won't change. Uh, so the immunization target rate of return will be less than the yield to maturity because of the lower reinvestment return. So the point is what uh, one of our students doesn't un uh, doesn't understand uh, why uh, it's a lower reinvestment return. Um, uh, his understanding is since the yield curve is upward sloping, uh, so the reinvestment rate uh, must be higher. Uh, so here is a misconception regarding uh, the yield to maturity and reinvestment rate and whether yield to maturity is a, a good approximation of the uh, expected rate of return of the portfolio. So let's decompose that. So uh, to see, uh, let's talk about what is immunization and what's the purpose of the immunization. So by immunizing a portfolio, you tend to lock in with rate of return. So the purpose of the immunization is to identify a portfolio uh, for which there is a change in price is exactly equal to the change in reinvestment income. As we all know, when there is a uh, there is increase in yield, uh, the price of the bond goes down. But when there is increase in yield, you can also uh, reinvest the coupon at higher interest rate. So there is a positive effect, which is the reinvestment income will be positive but there is also a negative impact because the price goes down. So if you want to immunize of your portfolio, uh, then the price change uh, and the reinvestment income has to offset each other. So if a manager wants to construct, uh, can construct such a portfolio, then uh, he can assure a rate of return over the time horizon which is locked in. So the manager won't be able to um, increase the rate of return whenever there is a change in interest rate because he's already locked in with the rate of return. So if there is a change in uh, interest rate, the portfolio's total return won't be affected because the price change and the reinvestment income exactly offsets one another. So the immunization target rate of return, what is the immunization target rate of return? So you have to target a rate of return that is defined as the total return of the portfolio assuming no change in term structure. So here is the assumption, there is no change in term structure. So what will happen if uh, the portfolio, if the current term structure is uh, upward sloping? Uh, so then the next question is whether the target rate of return equals uh, the YTM of the portfolio. So let's see um, the target rate of return. If we see this slide, the question is regarding is the target rate of return equals the YTM of the portfolio. Uh, the, our answer is target rate of return will always differ from the portfolio's present yield to maturity unless the term structure is flat. So here is the uh, con concept. Whenever the yield curve is flat, the yield to maturity is a good approximation of the bond's expected rate of return. But yield to maturity is a flawed measure of portfolios, uh, fixed income portfolios expected return when the yield curve is not flat when the yield curve is upward sloping here is we are talking about when the yield curve is upward sloping the target rate of return will be less than the yield to maturity but the question is uh, why because the because of lower reinvestment return now the question is why lower reinvestment return let's see this excel file where we can see a five year bond the bond has a coupon of 10 taka so you expect 10 taka in every year and in the at the end of five year you will be able to receive the uh, principal so 110 at year 5 so you can see the current term structure is upward sloping where the one year 
spot rate is 6%, 2 year spot rate is 7.5%, 3 year spot rate is 8.8%, 4 year spot rate is 9.8%, and 10.5% is the 5th year spot rate. So what will be the price of the bond? If we calculate the present value of each coupon using the spot rate, which is actually called the arbitrage free valuation, then you will get the summation of all the present value is equal to 99.50, which means this bond should trade at 99.50 given the current term structure. But what is the win to maturity? We want a single rate. If we discount all the cash flows with that single rate, the present value of all the cash flows has to be equal to this 99.50. So what is that rate? Uh, if we calculate the internal rate of return of this cash flow, then the yield to maturity is 10.13%, which assumes three uh, assumptions. Number one assumptions, we are expecting no default. So we are expecting the coupon to receive at the time when the coupon is due. We also expect the par value will be paid at maturity. And uh, the second example, uh, the second assumption is we hold the bond until maturity. And the third assumption is we will be able to reinvest all the cash flows at the calculated yield, which is 10.13%. This is where uh, the concept we can able we will be able to reinvest every time 10 taka at 10.13%. But here is the assumption that yield curve doesn't change. So if we assume that the current term structure, which is an upward sloping, and that won't change, so whenever at the end of one year we will receive taka 10. So at year one, we'll receive TACA 10, and that 10 TACA will be reinvested for four years. So given the current term structure, what will be the four-year spot rate one year from now? If the term structure doesn't change, then the four-year rate will be 9.8%. So we'll be able to reinvest this 10 TACA at 9.8%. After year two, we'll receive TACA 10, and that 10 TACA will be reinvested at Three years spot rate because from year two to year five we will reinvest taka ten and we will receive that future value at year five. If the term structure doesn't change, then that ten taka will be reinvested for three years and that three years spot rate is 8.8 percent. After year three, we will reinvest taka ten for two years and two years spot rate will be 7.5 percent. So the third coupon will be reinvested at 7.5 percent and similarly the fourth coupon will be reinvested at 6 percent. So here we can see the first coupon is reinvested at 9.8%, second coupon is reinvested at 8.8%, third coupon is reinvested at 7.5%, and the fourth coupon is reinvested at 6% because we are assuming there is no change in the term structure. So what will be the realized return of the bond if we assume the term structure doesn't change? That must be not equal to 10.13%. So the realized YTM will be much less than 10.13% because of lower reinvestment return. So this line tells you for an upward sloping yield curve, the immunization target rate of return will be less. Why less? Because we won't be able to reinvest all the coupon at the calculated YTM, which is 10.13%. Here we have shown that if the yield curve is upward sloping, we'll be able to reinvest the coupon at lower rate compared to the 10.13%. That is what actually told in the um, uh, fixed income uh, topic of classical immunization. So many people do not understand this because why uh, this is lower reinvestment return. The answer is if the income doesn't change, uh, we'll be able to reinvest the uh, coupon at lower spot rate and which will result in uh, the lower expected rate or lower realized rate of return compared to the uh, actual YTM, which itself mean YTM is a flawed measure of uh, expected rate of return of bond when the term structure of interest rate is not flat. Thank you.